Rolling Realtor is going to get personal today. I've been a little bit critical of all the vans we've been out to look at. Some people are kind of coming down on me, so let's talk about the example, the baseline, if you will. This is my daily driver. It's got the Jeep wagon wheel upgrade. We are missing a little bit of paint here and there. Got a little bit of rust on this trim down here. I happen to know that's a replaceable part, fairly easy. Got a little more paint missing here. Maybe wasn't the best paint job done. Something going on on the roof there. That doesn't look quite right. This toolbox is non-standard. Got some crack in the tail light. See some pretty heavy uh, drips in the paint there. Little modification made to the third brake light. Looks like a camera in there. Yeah, maybe not the best work on the vinyl, but you can see the van has been waxed a few times at least. That's wax built up in the cracks of the vinyl, accentuating the problems that they uh, obviously had putting the vinyl on. Covering up that hinge is no easy feat. A little bit of paint coming off the bumper, no big deal. Another crack in the tail light. Let's take a look inside. 504,000 miles almost. So this is not a low mile van by any means. Looks pretty clean. Phone charger, another phone charger over here. Got some things that obviously aren't quite the normal. And it's obviously not been cleaned up for sale, but that's because I'm not selling it. Don't ask. As they say, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. This one here, I wouldn't let it go. showing some rust and stuff there. Kind of typical. Got some aftermarket wiring going on here. Whoops, I just pulled that out. Uh, a little bit of rust bubble happening here. Mm. But we're not rusty down in there. We're not rusty down in there. Crust happening up here. Of course, we're missing the insulation blanket from under the hood. That's pretty common. I must say that's better than the average bear. Got no dash lights. I can hear already the auxiliary pump is turning. Sellers, this seller's not going to let you take that cap off to look at it today. You're just going to have to take my word for it. It's pretty nice under there. 
fuel filter looks like it could be uh, getting aged there. Battery tray is still intact. You see another little piece of it over here where it's got a little bit of surface rust on it, but it's not missing metal like we've seen so many times. Pretty clean, really clean for around this area. This is a lot of times a leaky area where we get a lot of oil and boost pressure is lost here. Just tiny bit of oil is spread out over a long time. So this one's been maintained a little bit. Kind of common here, this needs some attention. No visible smoke coming out of the tailpipe. Smells good, sounds good. I did notice a little dent in the door here. Whoopsie. A little, little dot of rust. And, well, since it's my van, I know what that's all about. That's a little bit unusual. For the purpose of argument, let's just say it's there to balance out the toolbox on the other side. If you were to take that panel off, you'd find out there's another reason. A little hint right here. Got a dent underneath the door. That right away suggests to me this door has been replaced because how do you make that dent? Well, maybe it was a loading accident when the door was open. It wasn't. Oh, I see another little bit of sag in the paint here underneath the vinyl. They tried to hide it. I'm going to call that clever vinyling. Hey, what do you know? Who's that guy? Non-standard floor carpet here. These little holes in the plugs tell me somebody has had this out. Here too, we've got holes in the plugs, which means this panel has been out and maintenance has been done down there at some point over the years. And as a Sprinter owner myself, I know that that maintenance has been done several times over the years where the door wouldn't open and close like that. I mean, really. I think I know a guy with some videos that can help you make your door close like that. Whoops. Door speakers, you don't see that very often in a T1N Sprinter. Uh, this cubby hole was made into a speaker box, but it looks like that speaker box needs a little bit of improvement. See right away, everything is kind of black and dirty. But what we, what we don't see right away is the orange rust, the surface rust that we've seen on so many recently. The seams here under the footwell are not delaminating. No crust and rust popping out. We've got some lighting under here. LED strip lights, that's a little unusual. Hmm. I got just the start of some rust here. Just the start. Non-standard drain hole there. Looks like that was obviously punched out and painted. That non-standard drain hole might have everything to do with why these sills are not rusty as most. Transmission pan is dry, clean, connector also dry. Uh, bottom of the bell housing is remarkably dry. Still not seeing that rust that we typically see on every van. So often we see rust 
right here. But as you can see, there is none. Exhaust pipe is intact. No holes in that. It's not rusting apart. Up under here, we usually see some orange on other vans, but not this one. This is all black and dirty, but dry. Parking brake mechanism is looking a whole lot better than any other we've seen. Literally any other we've seen. Uh, usually that's quite rusty, but here it is uh, nice and protected. Looks like we've got some big wire going to the uh, alternate battery here, the leisure battery. Uh, I'm getting back down here. Uh, we've got factory tow wire has been disconnected, a uh, towing package. The connector has been cut off. Plug into short power. Again, right behind the wheel well solid as a rock let's get up here where you can see it there is not a bit of crunchy crust on there anywhere so that's looking really good there's a strange hole in the floorboard there that has been sealed up and maybe this wire could be routed a little bit better but it doesn't appear to be pinching or binding anywhere so we're going to call that all right Again, we'll look for the rust in the most common spots. And not only do we not have rust here, but we have some slop of the factory undercoating on the outside. Somebody didn't know how to use their jacks or their uh, garage lift and put it under the edge of the body. Thanks, guys. Ah. Back down here, we've got lots of undercoating. Looks like somebody's been under here with a pressure washer at least once. And not a dot of rust. There is uh, nothing wet on the fuel tank. Behind the front wheel, no rust. Solid, clean, no rust. Looks like we've got some cheap hose clamps here that might need to be addressed. Got just a touch of orange here on the oil pan. Somebody needs to spill some transmission fluid on there, keep that from rusting up. Everything looks, uh, you know, it's a little bit dirty. It's a 2005, so it's a 15 year old van with a half million miles on it. Yeah, it's seen some dirt. But if you remember yesterday's edition of uh, Rolling Realtor, all of this area here on that low mile van, this was rusty and bubbly and looking like, well, I'm not gonna say. Not on this high mile van. I know this has not been replaced. This is original from 2005. But a high mile van does have the occasional leak. Oil leak, boost pressure will leak out oil. Diesel fuel leaks when the high pressure fuel pump starts to come apart. High mile vans have these problems and you know, all that petroleum product leaking down on the underside of the van slows the rust. Let's be honest, a high mile van is better than a low mile van. Put your argument in the comments below. Mm, front of the oil pan looks a little bit wet here, but it's like sticky. It's not slimy, it's not currently wet. It looks like something is dried there, probably a uh, Xerox G05. Yeah, got a little bit of discoloration on the metal bits here. 
Looks like maybe we haven't had a fuel leak or an oil leak in a long time and we're due for one. But again, our parts are looking pretty damn good compared to that van with only 120,000 miles on it. And over here on the left side, we do not have any wasp nest built up here like a low mile van that we looked at yesterday. Uh, it looks a whole lot better. Let's see, these rotors, well, they don't feel new. I can feel a little wave on there. There's a little ridge right here. Be interested to see what condition the pads are in. But as we discussed, it's, uh, yeah, we're not gonna go there. We're not taking the van apart that far. Got to take a wheel off to look at the pads. Harmonic, harmonic balancer has clearly been replaced. Clutch fan spins, but not ridiculous. You know, not freely. Alternator looks like a uh, giant in there, so that's obviously the 200 amp. Underside of the turbo actuator looks clean. And again, no rust. No rust across the front. Oh, ambient air sensor's kind of hanging out down here and not necessarily a normal place, but it's not up here hanging on the bottom of the radiator where it would be a problem. I guess that's as good a place as any for it. Now here's the best part. This is why it's Buttercup's van. She loves her little shelf here and her little lamb chop. perched right on the back of the seat rest here so if anything happens she's well protected well protected by the headrest a couple of chains keep her from tipping and we can adjust that so if the seat's tipped up or tipped back more we can adjust her to be level this third seat show you how that works we just and it swings into position up here for a third passenger. Complete with seat belt, shoulder support, the whole thing. Now over here behind the seat, we've got the diesel heater, the inverter. Inverter runs the air conditioner for four to six hours, depending on how hot you've got it. How hot, yeah, how cold you've got it in the weather. That seat just swings back and locks into place. Got some lighting up here. So when sitting in this seat, I have a mirror. I can turn on that light overhead and brush my hair. As you can see, I don't use it very often and I'll sit here enough. Two bunk beds. Under the air conditioner, we've got the audio amplifier, most critical. Inverter, runs the air conditioner. Pure sine wave, of course, so it's safe to, to charge our laptops off of that electrical outlet right up there. And you also saw one behind the seat back here. So we've got electricity all over the van. We've got sliding door cabinets to hold the kitchen and the clothes. And in the back, we've got sheets and towels. That door needs a little adjustment today. I'll get back to that. Clothes hangs there over all the tools. Behind the tools, we've got some pockets. Always on internet. 400 amp hour battery. Onboard battery charger. Disconnect switch. Over here, we've got a couple of towel bars. Toilet paper roll. Camper potty sink and essentially the uh, bathroom door if you will is just a curtain 
water pump is not always on. We have a little switch right over here on the side to turn on the water pump. But even when that pump is off, we also have a micro switch here inside the cabinet. Right up here. Which turns on the water pump. So if we open the door and hang that outside, we can take a shower. And as you can see, it's a pretty decent flow of water. Five gallon jug, easily replaced by pulling it out from underneath there. It's locked in to a hole in the bottom of the cabinet so it can't fall over. That hole is specially shaped so it can tip out very carefully when the back door is open for replacement. Cardboard drawer. Uh, the cardboard drawer is, uh, is magnetic, magnetically latched. Looks like it's kind of coming apart there a little bit. Let's see, what else? Oh, if we don't want to take that jug out, we can fill it from here. I've got a valve on it here, which makes the filling really convenient. When the jug gets full, I can turn it off here and then go back to the, the, uh, the source, turn the hose off, open the valve, disconnect the hose or whatever there. So that the hose empties out as soon as I start Unscrewing it here, it sucks air in rather than dripping water onto the carpet. It's a very clean system. This counter space here is good for snacks. Got my snacks, got the dog's snacks. It holds the air conditioner. And it seems like a lot of wasted space, but I'll show you what that's all about. The outside here. We have the air conditioner with these vents, hot air out, cold air in. Oops, I have that backwards. Hot air out, cold air in. Cold air goes in the underneath, beneath it here, the dividing line. This dividing line rests right here and separates so the hot air is always being pushed out and cold air is always getting sucked into the bottom, filling this cabinet. I can take all of this stuff out and put the generator in here with its extended run fuel tank. I think some of you have probably seen pictures of that already, certainly in some of our other videos. All right, looking at the roof. Got some strangeness going on up here. Looks like we've treated some rust and forgot to come back and paint white on top. Rust seams or uh, body seams are covered up with extra tape. Maybe not the best answer, but it's working for now. I don't see any rust up here. I see treat evidence that it's been treated and even covered, protected, but no rust. <laughs>